Every hour of sleep before midnight is worth two after midnight. Your grandparents and great-grandparents probably adhered to that creaky adage. The mythology is unfortunate because there's no pumpkin-like magic that occurs. And while nothing special happens to you or the quality of your sleep at the stroke of midnight, many to wonder, what is the best time to go to bed? Your sleep quality does change as the night wears on. The time of night when you sleep makes a significant difference in terms of the structure and quality of your sleep. Your slumber is composed of a series of 90-minute cycles during which your brain moves from deep, non-rapid eye movement non -REM, sleep to REM sleep. That 90-minute cycle is fairly stable throughout the night. But the ratio of non-REM to REM sleep changes. That non-REM sleep tends to dominate your slumber cycles in the early part of the night. But as the clock creeps toward daybreak, REM sleep muscles in. That is significant, because some research has suggested that non-REM sleep is deeper and more restorative than lighter, dream-infused REM sleep though Walker says both offer important benefits. What does this have to do with the perfect bedtime? The shift from non-REM to REM sleep happens at certain times of the night regardless of when you go to bed. So, if you hit the sack extremely late at, say, 3 a.m. your sleep will tilt toward lighter, REM-heavy sleep. And that reduction in deep, restorative sleep may leave you groggy and blunt-minded the next day. That is unfortunate news for night shift workers, bartenders, and others with unconventional sleep-wake routines, because they cannot sleep efficiently at odd hours of the day or night. Shift work has been linked to obesity, heart attack, a higher rate of early death and even lower brain power. In one study, people who had experience working at night had lower scores on standardized tests of memory and processing speed than those who had not and people who had a decade or more of shift work experience had such pronounced cognitive deficits that they equaled about 6.5 years of cognitive decline. Even shortened sleep has an effect, one recent study found. People who slept for 5 hours a night for just a week had a higher heart rate during the day. The idea that you can learn to work at night and sleep during the day you just can't do that and be at your best. Your brain and body's circadian rhythms which regulate everything from your sleeping patterns to your energy and hunger levels tell your brain what kind of slumber to crave. And no matter how hard you try to reset or reschedule your circadian rhythms when it comes to bedtime, there is just not much wiggle room. These cycles have been established for hundreds of thousands of years. You do not have to be a shift worker to feel this. When it comes to bedtime, he says there is a window of several hours, roughly between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m., during which your brain and body can get all the non-REM and REM shut-eye they need to function optimally. And believe it or not, your genetic makeup dictates whether you are more comfortable going to bed earlier or later within that rough 8 to midnight window. For people who are night owls, going to bed very early goes against their physiology. The same is true for, morning larks, who try to stay up late. For either type of person, as well as for most sleepers who fall somewhere in between, the best bedtime is the hour of the evening when they feel most sleepy. That means night owls should not try to force themselves to bed at 9 or 10 if they are not tired. Of course, your work schedule or family life may dictate when you must get up in the morning. But if you can find a way to match your sleep schedule to your biology and get a full 8 hours you will be better off. While small children tend to be most tired early in the evening, the opposite is true for college-aged adults who may be more comfortable going to bed around or after midnight. Beyond college, your best bedtime will likely creep earlier and earlier as you age. And again, all of this is set by your biology. Seaburn suggests experimenting with different bedtimes and using sleepiness as your barometer for a best fit. Just make sure you are rising at roughly the same time every morning weekdays or weekends. It is fine to sleep an extra hour on your days off. But if you are getting up at 6.30 during the work week and sleeping until 10 on weekends, you're going to throw off your sleep rhythms and make bedtime more challenging.